Move forward. All right. So, welcome, 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 everybody. I think I know most of you. Probably what you don't know about me is that I lived in New York for 35 years. That's where I got all my training. And I decided to move back to Birmingham in 2011 is when I actually sold my house and moved. And one of the things that I wanted to do down here was to bring Reiki and really create a Reiki community. And so I did, I came down. I also was here to help my parents. At the time I moved down, they were doing pretty good. My mom and dad were doing okay. You know, they were starting to have some struggles. My, and so that was part of coming down here. So when I did first come down here, I did, I reached out to UAB. We did a proposal. One of my students, Lori Knight, was in the chaplaincy program. And part of a Reiki 3 training that I do is a community project. And so she said, can I go into the chaplaincy with my project? Like, yeah, that'd be great, because I want to try and get over there too. And so we did, we did a proposal, we wrote it up, and we started to nurture it. They were trying to find us money. Money is always the issue, right? And then my dad passed away. And so then I started helping my mom, and so a lot of that became on the wayside, as life does. I had to kind of put it on hold. And really, my Reiki practice then became really more of my private practice teaching and trying to maintain as I was taking care of my mom. Well, fast forward, now I'm in a position now to really kind of start to bring this back around. And lo and behold, I did meet with um, Dr. Salvador last week, UAB, brought the proposal back. She was very interested, very excited, would love to see this come forward, wants to help us find funding, wants to help us bring this in. We don't quite know how, right? But it is a start. And so, yes, I'm going to update the proposal with some new research, and we're going to see what we can do, whether we teach, whether we bring it over there, whether, I don't know. But this is where I feel like in Birmingham, the more presence we have, the better it's going to be for everybody. So if we can come together and let Birmingham know Reiki is here, Reiki is available, Reiki is in the hospitals, Reiki is in the clinics, Reiki is for mental health, Reiki is for so many things, it will become more and more known and people will, so will start to seek it out. I also went over to one place, anybody know one place? Excellent, domestic violence where they're containing everything into one place, the, the detectives, the police, the nurses, the, the crisis counseling, all of that one place and she was very interested their facility is amazing what they're trying to do. And I'm gonna go back and talk to them again, specifically about Reiki. And my thoughts are like, wow, Reiki clinic or something. I don't know, maybe we help the, 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 the employees. Maybe we help the people. I don't know. But again, if I tried to think about, well, I have to do this all myself, it would be defeating. So I figure, why not? Let's bring the Reiki community together and let's start spreading it out. And maybe together as a community, we can do things like that. So that's really where some of this is coming from. And I will say that Becca and Meredith have been amazing over here. They want to help me to bring the Reiki program. I know y'all know I'm over at Birmingham Yoga, and I love Birmingham Yoga, and I then have my studio over there. But this facility is just such a beautiful facility, and they're very encouraging to do this kind of thing. So it's like, why not? This is the perfect opportunity. So I think, as we all know, Reiki has so many amazing benefits in so many diverse areas that the more that we come together, the more that we can begin to spread this work out. So that's really what brought this together, is to try to like really kind of bring people in. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about how are you using it? How are you using it? Are you teaching? Are you just using it for yourself? Like what are the things that Reiki can do and how can we grow this community in Birmingham? So that's really my intention for today. So I wanted to start with Jennifer. Yay, Jennifer, who I love dearly, who has this amazing company called Harvest Moon, who has provided us with this great raw vegan food today, the things that she does. And also, too, she's a Reiki master. So I just kind of wanted to bring Jennifer up and let her start a little bit and talk about how she, not so much your company, I love your company, but how she uses Reiki in her life and her work with her family and all. So welcome, Jennifer. Hi, thanks for having me. Yes. Um, so yes, I'm a Reiki master. I have been for two years now, um, and I use the Reiki a lot at my home with my children, um, pretty much on a daily basis when they come home from school, um, I'm running their energy as they're going to bed at night, I'm running their energy there, and then when they're not feeling well, they'll often come to me and ask for Reiki. Um, and so I have a little treatment room in my house, and I'm actually hoping to expand this year and to bring that in to my nutritional counseling that would include a Reiki treatment because in my opinion, once you get the body moving and you're starting to connect to, to that energy source, you're gonna also start to really think about what's going in your body and the energy that's with your food. Um, and thinking about eating to live instead of 
living to eat. And so what <laughs> that's I'm, a good that's a good point. <laughs> right. So we're all, you know, we're all full of energy, including the food that we eat. And so that's also where I use it. When I do go to prepare my menu, you know, it starts at the farm. Like I'm can talking to my farmers, everything I use is locally sourced. And it starts with the energy that they're putting into the food, into the field, into the soil. I visit the farms, you know, I put my hands in the dirt. And so I feel like my food prep starts there. And then from there, I create my menu. Um, I'm sprouting my grains. I'm bringing things back to life. And I'm using my Reiki the whole time. And then when I do start the day of catering, I'll set my intention in the space. I'll open up for the energy to come in and to create a space that's going to be a nurturing and healing and that the food that goes out, that will have, it will have vitality and, and what, what people need from it. Um, I do have a lot of people that I cook for that have um, cancer and autoimmune diseases, and that's what my company is built on, is, is to create um, vegan alkaline food that is there for that purpose, to um, heal the body, because food is medicine. So I use my Reiki in all of that aspect. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I think that's amazing that we can use it with our food, we can charge the energy of the kitchen, mm -hmm. we can use it in our home. And I love that concept, like even all the way going back to the farmers, like right there at the earth, right? It's a universal life force, we know this. So going right back to the earth and then bringing that all forward all the way to the final product, which is actually very delicious. Yeah. Yeah, excellent. Thanks. Yeah, thank you so much. Yes, thank definitely. You. Questions for Jen? Anybody? Who tried the... Sea moss, really Very delicious, good. right? Yeah, yeah. 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 it's got a little saltiness. It's that ocean. It has 98 of the 102 minerals that are in, present in our body. Cool. Yeah, so it's super nutritious. It's it's something that I sell. So I sell it in a gel form, and what I do is I heat it up with a little more alkaline water. Today I added fresh ginger and some limes. Um, and when I prepare it, it's, it's put through the body mix, so I don't heat it until I'm about to drink it. Some people do process it and they boil it because it comes dehydrated. Um, but what I do is I soak it for 24 hours in alkaline water and then put it straight into the Vitamix. And it really has to be a Vitamix. A regular blender will, mm. it will die. So it's Jen does all the work for you. Yeah, yeah, I do all the work for you. And then I sell the gels um, through my uh, company. They're also available here at Practice Works. Sometimes they're stocked up here as well. You can just Grab them yeah, you can get a little jar, is what I do, and then I take a couple of tablespoons of it in the morning, and I add just a little extra lime. Mm -hmm. She's already it. done all the work. And then I drink it first thing before anything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like a 12 ounce lasts me a week. You can get a larger one as well. Yeah. I think it's 12 ounce. Yeah, 12 ounce. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, but definitely. And then her food is delicious too. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yay, yay, Reiki yeah. on, keep going. So I had asked Mike from Evolve Massage to come over and talk a little bit, because they use a lot of Reiki for pain, but his child was sick this morning. So Mike, we're giving you a shout out, and perhaps next time you can. So I'd just like to kind of open it up and see who else would like to share. Bridget, come on. Yay, Radiate Love. There you go, woman. Yay, welcome. Hello. Yeah, so Bridget is from Magic City Meditations. Magic yes. City Meditations. Yeah. So, and, um, I just had a lot of health benefit from meditation, found out a lot about myself, found a deeper state of health, mm -hmm. and I'd meet other people that were like, I just can't meditate. Yeah. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and people do all the time. Reiki helped me introduce people to meditation mm -hmm. in a way that helped them get to that state. And so I incorporate the Reiki that you taught me. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, in hypnosis and massage and my meditation in my meditation classes and I do levitation meditation and so which is a different experience oh. yeah you're hanging in the silt you know <laughs> okay and I come around use Reiki on each person so yeah it's been all aspects of my practice yeah, and that's and over yes. at Pura Vita? Pura Vita. Yeah, Pura Sunny's place. And Sunny's a Reiki master teacher as well, yes. right? She yes. teaches over there. Yes. yes. So and Chris is actually getting certified from her okay. this weekend. Okay, so. there you go. Chris is? My partner okay. at Magic City okay. Meditation. Yay, there you go. Excellent. Yeah. Yay. All aspects. Yay. So where are you guys located? Right up the street, off 37th Street South. Yeah, right up from Birmingham Yoga, right over there. She's adorable studio there. Yeah. So when you do your massages, 
Are, are you offering, let's back up, are you offering Reiki by itself? Are you doing Reiki and massage? I do Reiki by itself, mm -hmm. but I often combine Reiki with massage. Mm -hmm. So, And it deepens the massage for many people. The mm -hmm. feedback that I get is, that was not a regular massage. You know, yeah. they feel it so much more. It's almost a soul rest is that the feedback that I get the most from people. Have you started to notice people asking just for Reiki, or they're still just really massage? No, no. Um, I have a lot of people that also ask for just Reiki. Some people do not like to be touched, or people do, especially people with PTSD or some kind of trauma experience. Mm -hmm. They want the body to work. They're really intrigued by it, but they don't want the touch. Mm -hmm. And so Reiki has been a really kind and gentle way to give them that relief, that pressure relief that our body takes yeah. on. So, yeah. yeah, that's a great way to layer it in. And I think that's a really good point too because I know for myself, Reiki is an underlying force of energy. Yes. So whether I'm doing tapping or Akashic readings or working with crystals or light, it's like Reiki is always there and it's always a guiding force. So it really layers in to modalities that we already have. Right. Yeah. Right. And it deepens the hypnosis when I'm putting people in hypnosis for smoking cessation or weight loss or whatever. Um, it helps them relax on a deeper level so it's able to enter the subconscious easier. Nice. So, yeah, I had not really thought about that, but that's a good way to look at that. Sure. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Yay. Yay. Thank you. Excited to be a part of your community. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Definitely. Who else would like to share? Yeah. It's Zora. 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 I'm Zora, and I am the owner of the Bath House. We do herbal health and wellness. Uh, we moved from Huey Town at the end of last year, where we were mostly uh, transitioning from focusing on herbal health into our services. So now we're doing herbal consultations, and along with the Reiki, I am a master teacher. I've been studying for 12 years. So my business has really been able to help so many people through Reiki. And now I'm seeing people just coming for Reiki and it's amazing. And I just, it makes me feel like I'm fulfilling my purpose because I'm able to heal people and help them see how they can heal themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just so fulfilling. Yeah. Which is such a beautiful point about Reiki because we can't say Reiki cures anything, right? But it does bring us back into balance, right? right? And so when the body comes back into balance, and I keep telling myself this because I've been suffering a little upper respiratory, the more I come back into balance and the body will heal. But we have to constantly work with that. Even when we pick up stuff, right? We were just talking about this upper respiratory thing going around. Like even when we pick up stuff, we still have to constantly come back into balance so that the body can heal. Yeah. What are the other services that you offer with the bathhouse? Well, we do all natural herbal wealth, health and wellness. So Everything is handmade. Uh -huh. All of my products for the body, I mix my own herbs. I'm an herbalist as well. Mm -hmm. So I do consultations from everything from hypertension to you know people that want to lose weight. Mm -hmm. So I can do you do baths? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What kind of baths do you do? We do spiritual baths. Oh. Uh, we do uh, detox baths as well, mm -hmm. and just a regular cleansing bath. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so where are you located now? In Homewood. In Homewood. Okay. Yay. Centralized, now we're getting more traction because it's a centralized location, mm -hmm. which is great for everybody to kind of maneuver around the city. Everybody knows where Homewood is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, what part of Homewood? Like, we're right off Beacon. Beacon okay. okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Yay, well very nice to know that you're here. I'm so glad to be a part of the community as well. This is amazing. I'm so excited about, I was reading last year about it going into the hospitals in other cities, and I'm like, we really need that here. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. I'm happy to be here. <coughs> yes. Nice to meet all of you. And I think that's yes. yes. to call upon you. And we do need it here. And I think UAB is a great place to start. I really do. I think it's a great hospital. It's very international. So we just have to come up with the resources in terms of, re of research and, you know, what's going on. And then just keep pursuing it. Keep pursuing it. And I think there's many avenues over there, whether we offer it to staff or whether we go into the teaching. I know in New York, when we had our program up in New York at New York Hospital, we ended up having to come in through the teachers, uh, through the nursing, as a teaching to the nurses. Because even these last few years with my mom so much in the hospital, they're so overwhelmed. 
for us to expect the nurses then to have the time to offer, they really couldn't. Uh -huh. So really it was more for self-care. And then we would set up Reiki shares in the hospital so that they would start on a regular basis taking a break once a week and really working mm -hmm. on each other so that then that changes the atmosphere. And that's really what I had said to Dr. Salvador, is like, let's start at the staff, let's start at the PT, let's start at the nurses so that they feel more relaxed. And then that's gonna shift the energy of the hospital and then figure out who we can bring in for the, for the patients that are there. But I feel like it has to kind of start at the top and move down, right? Yeah. So finding ways to do it. Yes, definitely. Yay. Well, thank you so much for coming today. Really thank appreciate you. it. Nice to meet you. Nice yeah. To meet you. Okay, who else? Amy, how about for your art? All right. Yay. Love your necklace. Thank you. I was looking for some awkward words. Yeah. And found them. Someone drilled holes in every rock, but it wasn't me. So, <laughs> so introduce yourself for us. I'm Amy Salvaro, and I own the Glass Studio. We have a, a glass studio a few blocks south of here, and I'm fairly new to the Reiki community. I, I trained in Atlanta, and then I found out about Terry, and I finished I did my level two in December. My interest is in creating through glass and light and music and symbology a space that has high frequency. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, I love meditation and all the discipline it, it takes to do all that. Not everybody really wants that. Can you create a space that offers the energy? So that's kind of where I would like, you know, creativity is more my focus. I'm glad to find out about the better that's it. Um, and so that's kind of where my focus is. So can you transmit that? Yes, you can. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So right now you're using it primarily in your studio for yourself. I'm Did your son let you? <clears throat> my son, uh, he, he, he's very open to things. My husband died four years ago. We've been through a lot of changes. And he says, thousands of years old, I'm good with it, Mom. Okay. <laughs> so now it's mainly for me. I, I've come to a point in my life where I had to admit I need some healing and some downtime. And anybody who walks the caregiving journey for years and then deals with the, the death of a family, essentially. So um, it's more for me right now. Okay, but, uh, it's excellent. Uh, okay. Yeah, know thyself first, right? Yay. But I love your vision. I, it's yeah. really powerful. And, and we can make glass panels up to 80 inches long and 40 inches wide. So there's actually a possibility of handling the symbology and light and uh, live music is my vision for it. Mm. Color. The, there, there are theories that coordinate the color with the tone. Absolutely. I'm just real interested mm -hmm. in all of that. Yeah. And then Reiki comes and in. And so glad that, that you all. did this, Terry. Thank yeah, you. I'm thank really you. excited about Yay. it. Yay. Yay. Well, thank you for sharing. Awesome. Absolutely. Who else? Camille? Camille. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to be on camera. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> all right. I don't need it. I'm an educational consultant um, in Midfield and Birmingham City School, and I use Reiki as an educational tool. Um, I don't really let people know that's what I'm doing, but I did a professional development at the beginning of the year and used a lot of the tools. We talked about um, how you can release energy. Energy is just a word that I use constantly throughout my training. Um, I, do, I clear the space before I start. Um, a lot of the Reiki practices that I learned in Reiki 2 have just been powerful. Shelter Ray. <laughs> just, Ray right? It's my everything. Every time I move in my car, I'm Shelter Ray in my son's car all the way in North Carolina. Yeah, thank you. Um, but I found Reiki to be a great connector. Mm -hmm. It's almost like it's the foundation. It's fundamental to every other practice um, and everything that I do. So, um, And I've been using it in just conversation. As a matter of fact, I have a group of coworkers who went to the bathhouse. Yesterday, and um, a friend of mine said, "Well, she came and did had a Reiki session." I thought, "Oh, hey, look into Reiki." They're like, "Hey, what is that?" Look it up. You know, we talked about universal life force energy and that kind of thing. So, you know, ed the educational aspect of Reiki just it makes a huge difference. And then I had to, I had a personal moment. My um, youngest son is a freshman in college, all the way in North Carolina, and he was having some emotional stuff going on. So I started looking for therapists because I'm a mental health professional. 
And then I thought about it and said, I need to practice what I preach. So I we had a Google and found a Reiki practitioner um, about five minutes away from his campus, and she did a consultation with him over the phone, and she actually does shamanic healing. I've never really known a lot about that, but she did a session with him um, just last week, and he called and went, Wow, I feel so much better. Mm-hmm. He has, you know, he hears me talk, and he's like, I'm not interested, I'm not interested. But, you know, it was a very pivotal moment for him, and it made a huge difference. We're going back next week, you know? Excellent. And so um, it's just, to me, I'd love for it to become just a, a part of life for most people, just to have a baseline understanding of how energy works in all of our lives. Yeah, I think so. I agree. And I know when I first came here, that was actually the reason I started my podcast, was to educate people, to talk about it, to get it out so that we could, because that is one of the things I found. People were whispering, shh, like, why are we whispering? Right, and so that's one of the reasons I did actually start my my podcast was to talk about it and start to educate. Definitely, yeah. And in our educational systems, I mean, imagine for our children what it could do. Right, so many amazing things. It really is. Yeah. And sometimes I know for me with my children they were really little, so for them it's kind of the norm because they were like four and five. Teenage years was a little weird, but even now they still come for it. But sometimes when they're older. They want to go somewhere else, right? And so I think that's good. You refer them to someone else, and now it can be his own thing, but he can still talk to you versus like, oh, that's just mom. Right? I think sometimes that becomes important, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's one of the things that I talk about. Yeah. Like, let's not call it woo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's make it real because it is real. Right. And science is starting to prove it. Although with Reiki, the hard thing about proving it is that there is that spiritual aspect. And so that one little spiritual aspect is what kind of can throw research. And so that is why, versus like EFT I work with, they can really prove it. Neuroscience is looking at the brain. They're looking at the amygdala, and they can have the data. Mm. But it is hard to prove with Reiki. Although Dr. Salvador EAB said, hey, maybe we can hook up some people and do some feedback that way. Yeah. So maybe we can do I some of that. Cool for, yeah. You know, especially yeah. if you follow a, a, a group and see how their lives have changed, even their blood pressure might be decreased. But, you know, Definitely. You know, yeah. So it's cool. Yeah, when I was in New York, we did some studies. We had two groups. One was a cardiology um, uh, segment, and they were monitoring people before and after and getting amazing results. And then we did an OBGYN, high risk pregnancies. Okay. And so they were showing the difference in that too. So those were a couple of the studies that I was involved with in New York Hospital. So there are ways to do it. It's just sometimes, I don't know, yeah. we'll see. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. Really you did it. Yeah, yeah. Yay. Yay. And I think that would be part of what we want to do with this is just kind of educate more and just talk about it and have, have meetings like this that we can then spread the energy of what is going on. And the more and more we talk about it, the better. Yeah. Paul, how about you? UAB, he's our UAB person, public health. I am a UAB person, I'm Paul Wolf. Uh, I work at the UAB School of Public Health and Public Health Research. Been there for quite a while and- Research? research. Is your baby research coming in? <laughs> yeah, exactly, so you know, educating people about the benefits of Reiki, I think is very important to get your foot kind of in the door for a lot of these things. It's been successful at other hospitals and places like that, clinics. I know myself, I've been a Reiki master for five years, and I use it mainly self-care, personal. Uh, I am a massage therapist, and I use it for massage as well. I kind of incorporate it in with massage, and there's a huge difference uh, result-wise from your clients, they're like, what did you just do, or what happened, what's different? And it's pretty uh, interesting to see the results from that. So it's nice to be a part of this community. I think it's an opportunity for all of us to uh, maybe expand our client base and just to get the word out. So. Hmm, I wonder how we could do a research with your people. Well, that's one of the things I'm thinking about, I'm trying to uh, figure out how we can get funding to do it. Okay. So. All right, so maybe we can connect uh, Dr. Salvador with your department or something like that. Or I'm sure a collaboration with her or you know, someone like her would be uh, a good route to go, especially with her. I think she's really interested and motivated. So. Yeah, she's in oncology and also, I think, director of integrated health over there. 
I forget exactly her title, but she yeah, definitely she has is. that title. And she's also, I think, Reiki master, Reiki to Reiki master herself. Mm -hmm. So it is part of her practice. And I think, too, I think she was kind of thinking, well, maybe we'll start with her nurses or something. Start small there, and in the meantime, try to find the funding and try to find the research. And she actually knew um, Jordan Dimash is who one of the people we talked to. He's in finance, so definitely the right people to get to. So I do think now is the time. I think, you know, you know, eight years ago, everybody's going to be like, what? <laughs> but I do think now is the time. And the more people that we start spreading out and work together and build this, the better it is, rather than feeling isolated. I know for a long time I felt isolated. Like, I can't do all this, so if I try. But I don't want to feel that way. I really don't. And I think right now everything is about collaborating and really working together instead of feeling like competing. I go, well, she's doing it. Why should I come here? You know, it's like, no, let's spread this out and let's really talk. And the more people that do it, and as we're seeing, there's so many ways to use it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, there's 23,000 employees at UAB, wow. and there's so yeah. many different departments. Mm -hmm. yeah. And just getting into the hospital side, to me, I think is key, or because there's so much opportunity that's been used, Reiki and cranial sacral works being used and has been used for many years. Mm -hmm especially on uh, premature babies and a lot of baby work um, as far as uh, calming them down, making them stop crying. It's just unbelievable some of the work that's been done, uh, but there's not enough exposure. So I think having a, you know, a pool of people such as ourselves uh, that are available to go help some of these people and get the word out, I think is going to be a key. So. Yeah. I think key in funding too. I know that part of the principles is that there needs to be money, there needs to be funding. You know, I know one of my students, Cheryl, was over, she's a PT, and she approached palliative care and started to do it, and they were really like, they wanted more and more, but it was all free. And so it was really draining, right? And yeah. so she couldn't continue. And Dr. Salvador was aware that she was there and spoke with her and talked to her, so we do know that we need to have funding, right? And so I know for many years, a couple years, I did the UAB health fair, and that was at the student level. And again, there's students, and I feel like, yes, they need it, but this is not the place to start. We really need to start at the top down. And again, the more I can feel there is a support here, people to call on and help fill in the gaps, I think the better it'll be. Rather than feel like I can't, I know I can't do it alone. I know I can't. So having a community here yeah. is really, really important, which is really kind of why we're here. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. All right, hey, Andrew, you want to say anything? Come on. <laughs> No? Yeah. You're using it for yourself? All right, yeah, yeah. And the leadership and the work that you do and your retreats, excellent, yay, yay. All right, well, I think this is a great way to really kind of start. I know there are other people that wanted to come today, the weather, who would have known it would be the coldest day? And <laughs> yeah, and I have to admit, I really wasn't sure what time to do it, and I feel like, you know, we can reach out and like, what would be a better time? When can we do this? How often do we want to meet? And these are some of the things that we can begin to address, and I think it's really, important that we try to figure this out, right? Whether it's here, whether it's at your own facility or something, you know, it doesn't have to be just here, but this is definitely a great location to do it and we're willing to help get it going. So is there another <coughs> time people would prefer? Would lunch time be better? Evening no, time? It's, it's, it's I like this. Go yeah. ahead and do it before I do other things. Yeah, yeah. get up, get out, and do it. I mean, right, it's not the coldest day of the year, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I do find sometimes the mornings are just go do it and then you can go on about your day. Yeah, for sure. And I know it's hard for some people, but we will be starting a Reiki circle here on Friday. <coughs> I think we said once a month maybe? I can't remember. I have to go back and see. I haven't started, but it'll be a noon time. And I do offer the one over at Birmingham Yoga on Wednesdays at 5.30. And everybody is welcome to come in, receive, practice. It is for Birmingham Yoga and there's a drop-in fee. Um, $15, I believe, and there'll probably there'll be a drop-in fee here, too, but that's part of the principles of practicing, and you get the experience, or you can simply receive, or you can just be a part of the group, right? And we all know, as, as Bridget said, even just for meditation, we always start for meditation, just that energy builds in the room, it's a really great way to connect with everybody else. So we'll definitely be starting one here. And then we'll see where this goes. I mean, I would like to have a little mailing list, and again, it'll just be for this, and we'll put you on my name, <laughs> you probably already are, but... Uh, just to kind of reach out and see what we can do so that we can continue along and then as things develop, either at UAB or one place or wherever else it goes, then we can start to build that. I mean, I think it would be great if we could have a Reiki clinic, right? But then we need people to fill it and then we have to have funding. And so that will be something I will talk to one place about. I know they have a fundraiser coming up in the fall and 
Maybe we'll do something to create some money to come for that. And that's just kind of one of the services there. Domestic violence is, is a really needed thing, and you know, I mean, support for that. And there are other things too. I mean, I would like to see Reiki for children, right? I really would, and that hasn't been something that I've been able to do, although I know the many benefits, but maybe there's somebody around that can then jump in for that as well. And the education, I think, is a really key part as well. Yeah. Any other comments? Anybody else want to add anything? They would like to see how this can help. Well, I would offer up my space. Okay. If you need an alternative place to meet. Okay. Uh, it's not terribly huge, but it would be. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would love it. And then we start to get to know each other's mm -hmm. place. I think that's a really great thing. Yeah. Once a month, once a season. What do y'all think? It's monthly. It's monthly. Probably. monthly. All right. Yeah, kind of like a meetup group, but we don't have to go to the meetup, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Anything else anybody would like to see as we come forward? Is there a way we can all have like a little group to communicate email lines or something? I mean, you guys are all on Facebook or something, but I don't really do that. I know you're not. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, there's other. Okay. Right. I know. Um, I guess through email. I can start a group email. It doesn't have to be a mailing list, but I can start maybe a group email. Um, I know there's other. Slack and stuff like that, although I didn't even hear Slack didn't really kind of make it. No, of course, Slack didn't kind of make it either. So I don't really know that answer, Paul. Um, yeah, I mean, it was just a thought. Yeah. Group um, Me is another one. Which is? Group Me. I don't know. It, it's, a, it's an app like that for people who don't do social media. Okay. But I use it for Disco. Yeah, okay. Disco Group uses it, and it works really well. The, okay. The group it's called Group Me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to uh, make a note about that and see, check it out, and maybe that's one way you can do it, because I do think the communication is important, and yes, I do social media, but I recognize that. I'll send you a good Okay. For me, because it's going to come in, I'm going to look at it, since it involves, this is just me, it involves downloading an app, I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. All of us have different... Before we settled with technology, I before this life was research director's paper at Fox 6 and had all the screens, and now I'm like, so I'll go for the email. Yeah. <coughs> well, I think we'll definitely do an email, but to have other communications. And if you're having events or something, you know, like who's teaching when, you know, that kind of thing, it's spread it out. And I think that, you know, having that ability to build this energy in here in Birmingham, it's going to take effort. Right? And it's going to take us working together to figure it out. Yeah. I think that you're really right about it being a time. Back in 1999, we put the labyrinth out at Pilgrim Church for people to walk into 2000. And we got hate mail, among other things. What? Oh, oh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, you're right. I did too. I used to, because I advertised in Natural Awakenings. I totally forgot that. I got so much hate mail. I had to go to the, to the mail, the post office, and file a complaint. Well, I we we got put that. on a cult list. They put Pilgrim what? Church on a cult list, the Watchtower Fellowship. And I'm being called in, and they're like, you know, we found blood and money outside the church steps. Did you do this? I'm like, no, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> so it really is, having gone through that 20 years ago, this is really a different time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's exciting. God, I totally forgot about that. I would get hate mail, hate they would send mail. me stuff, yeah, they would mark up the natural awakenings. Mm -hmm. I totally forgot about we that. We would do um, fire circles for the solstices and the equinoxes, and this was over in Mount Burkett. I could see somebody standing in the bushes, I could see the golf shirt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of course. I not doing anything <laughs> bad, so it, I haven't had that experience. It is very different now. Yeah. It is different now, I, hopefully, I think so, and I, you know, again, I'm big on talking about it, and, you know, I think more and more people are starting to talk about it and recognize that there is a lot of benefit to it, and the more that we bring the research forward and we talk about it, the better, and so that people know you don't have to go somewhere else to learn this, you don't have to go somewhere else for treatments, that we can provide it right here. I mean, I had a niece, and she was six years old, that had a form of Ewing's cancer in her foot, and there was nothing really here, and so we brought her up to New York, Sloan Kettering and all of that, to get the resource, to get it, and she was actually, one of the first examples I had where I actually saw how Reiki worked, because her, she ended up having to have her leg um, amputated, and as a prosthetic, but until that healed, they couldn't do anything, and it was not healing, and so I started working with her, and you could see the skin, 
turn around. You could see instead that it was becoming black, it was becoming pink again. Mm -hmm. And that was pretty major for me, especially because that was so many years ago. She's now 30, wow. right? Yeah, really amazing, definitely. So I think that the more resources we can pull together here in Birmingham, and let it be known, let you know people write up about us. Like, yes, we do have it here. I think the better it will be. And all the other modalities. I'm not saying the other modalities aren't as important because I use plenty of them, but I feel like Reiki is really one that can have so many benefits as it does and help so many people in so many ways. Yeah. And it'd be nice to have like a little clinic situation set up or a room where we would be able to have a uh, someone uh, come in for a Reiki treatment from somewhere that we would have staff it with you know, some of us or some of our colleagues in the field to, you know, this is further down the road, just take a, a vision of the future to where we would get known for uh, the services we're providing on that level. Yeah. Something to that effect. I would like to see Reiki Clinic. I know when I first moved here, we started to do it, and there was really no response to it at all, and how many times can you sit there by yourself and wait, right? <laughs> right? But I think that, you know, at one place is one place, but well, maybe there's some way that we could do it there and start there. I mean, that's just one area, right? But there's so many other places that it can really be helpful. Definitely. Yeah. And finding the funding and finding the resources is, is important because we know it works. I think many years ago when I first started, people were afraid to charge because they weren't sure. So if I don't charge, there's no sweat. But that's not really how it is, right? We're seeing that there are many, many responses. And so just like we go to the doctor, just like we go to other things, there has to be a cost. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. And if we don't bring in the money, then we can't sustain our lifestyle. We can't sustain the way that we work. So that is part of what it is. And the more that we do it, and you know, I will say, I've been suffering with this upper respiratory, and my doctor's not doing it. Right. It's just not doing it. So I am having to out of pocket other resources and other integrative health that I need, right? And we need the support. I really feel we need the support. And I know for my own self, Reiki has been such a guiding light for me in so many aspects since 1999 when I first came. 1997. Okay, I am old. 1997 when I first started it. Like, it's just been such a guiding force. And even this past year with losing my mom after caregiving her, it was the only thing I could do. It really was. So it really did help sustain me and then bring me back to here. And now I'm still coming out of it. I'm still working with it and I won't give up on it, right? So I appreciate all y'all coming today. Thank you so much. Yes, please spread the word. We'll bring it in. We'll talk some more. You know, maybe have different topics. We'll figure out what exactly we want to do. And this is just a beginning. So I do appreciate all of y'all coming today and supporting this. Yes. Thank you for having us. Yay. You're making blessings, as they say. Namaste. Thank, Thank you so much. Yay. Thank you. All right. So enjoy some more refreshments that we made before we go. And if you want, I think I have everybody's email, but maybe we'll just go ahead and sign the sheet of paper. Yay. Namaste. Namaste.